Then we've got another load of foam and another huge amount of water. Hi, I'm Gary from New Again. We've been dealing with cars with water leaks um, for over 30 years. So, um, I'm going to give you a walkthrough on how we do what we do. We've developed a three point um, simple system that deals with probably somewhere like 90% of all cars with water leaks. We've worked on all shapes and sizes, all models, all kinds of cars over those years, and we've tried to box it up and make it simple for you, who's probably watching this right now because you think or you found you have water in your car. When I mean water leaks, what I mean is not your radiator leaking, I'm talking about your footwell being wet. So, we're gonna take you over to our example car. We found many faults. It's been through our 28 point check. So we're gonna show you a walkthrough on how we deal with it. So let's talk a little bit about the car. Um, this person had a water coming in found it on the footwell, didn't have any idea where it was coming from, so that will be pretty much something like you guys right now. Um, uh, there's nothing obvious, no drips or anything, although sometimes people do say I've seen a drip from somewhere, but in this particular case, no obvious signs of drips or anything like that, just worked out that there seems to be water on the footwell. And uh, normally people think, oh, I must have spilt something, or, you know, I'm not quite sure where that's coming from. It's kind of a, a psyche thing. Um, but I can tell you that the, the, the likelihood is the water's been getting in from somewhere and it's been filling up, but it's filling up from the bottom upwards. So when you, find, when you first see the water, you're not gonna, you don't realise is actually there's obviously quite a few litres of water in there and we'll show you a bit later down the line as to how much water there really is. Um, okay, so we've moved a little bit further forward with this one already. Um, the sunroof pipe, uh, there is a pipe on the cassette of the sunroof, so you've got to seal around this sunroof. A lot of people don't realise that that seal will still let water by. Um, you get a little bit of debris in from time to time, but it, it's okay, you know, because most sunroofs sit in a plastic cassette, so when you're sitting in your car, you put the roof back, you don't actually realise where that's going. It doesn't just sit in mid-air behind the, behind the actual uh, headline in it it disappears into what's like a giant cassette. That's a good way of explaining it. And on the cassette, you have drainage points on all four corners. Most cassettes have four. And um, on this particular car, the drainage point that would run behind the, he behind the um, in, in between the headlining and the roof here, uh, would connect to the cassette, take the water down this um, uh, A-pillar, we call this, next to the screen, but behind the fabric, and it is in a rubber pipe, and down in and through and out of the arch. So that's normally how it would work. But in this particular car, this has been living in an environment where it's quite dirty and probably nobody's cleaned these, uh, the recess area, and, and then the water's found its way through and eventually the dirt with it, and obviously it's blocked. Now on this particular car, it's been blocked, but it's been blocked all the way down there, right in, inside a box section in the arch. So, um, Sometimes you think, oh, it might be blocked here, like a plug, if you like, on a, on a bath, you think, oh, it's all the dirt there. And, um, but it, this is blocked further down. So we fixed all of that, um, and that was fairly easy. We've unblocked it and we've um, cleaned it with a drain cleaner as well, so it's all nice and free-flowing again now. So there's no water now backing up and coming down onto the carpet. Um, but this car's still got a lot of water in it, and I'll show you in a minute about that. But let me show you something else. Um, when we've done our 28-point check, now the 28-point check will include checking the basic points that cars leak, as well as the screen, because some cars do leak on the screen, as well as some certain areas that we know cars leak. It's also checking uh, known points for that specific car because we've got a database with all of those on there. So sometimes we can see one of these like a Saab. Sometimes we can look at a Saab and look at other Saabs we've had in and see other points. But on this particular car, we found it's leaking at the door membranes. So 
it's not only been leaking at the front, but because of the age of the car, it's leaking in two or three other places. So all four door membranes are letting water by. Um, when I say door membrane, just to explain this to you, there's a, what's like a, a, a difference between the outside and the inside. You've got this metal bit on the outside, and then on this side, you've got your leathery, foamy bit, whatever you want to call it. This is your interior trim, but in the middle, there is a membrane, which is like a polythene sheet on a lot of cars. Sometimes they're made of different materials, but what that is to do, that, what that's for is to insulate you from the inside to the outside. Okay, so if you take the door panel off, we'll show you. You pull the panel off and then you'll see on this particular car what's there, and what I can demonstrate to you why it's leaking. Now, may not have been the primary leak and the primary problem of this car, but because we're doing the 28 point check, we've identified it. This particular customer is going to keep this car a few more years. Nothing wrong with it, it's a good engine. Doesn't want to buy a new car and get strapped up to the monthly payments. He loves his Saab, so why not keep it? So we're going to do the door membranes as well. We're going to address those. They're going to be taken off and resealed so that he, hopefully the car's not a problem going down the going for the future. Doesn't mean for sure, because of course we're not stripping the car and taking the entire car to thousands of pieces, but we're, going, we're giving it our best shot. We're going to do all the basic things on the car, fix the things that we know leak, and then the customers are taking away and try it. I've put these two uh, pad things here that open up a little bit of the gap where the water would go. So we're gonna put a little bit more water down there than you would otherwise get, and the water's gonna go down the glass where rainwater would go. Okay, so you've got a little bit of water running into the top of the door now on the outside. So where you normally see the rain running down, uh, it runs to that rubber. Of course, the rubber's not a perfect seal, and that's why the cars have a little drain off at the bottom of the doors. And the water's supposed to come out of the bottom of the drawer, like you can see there, it's coming out of the bottom of the door where it should come out, but it shouldn't come out on, the, on this side. So you can see clearly here, there's water coming out, but it's on this side of the seal. So that effectively would be going into the car. So when we get the door panel off, we will show how that's getting past that membrane. And this happens on a lot of cars. Um, sometimes it can be that maybe it's had a replacement piece of glass and the inside of the door hasn't been cleaned very well. That sometimes happens that you, you know, those of you these side glasses just shatter. So those of you who've had that happen before, um, a lot of that glass is still inside the door. You don't really just stop at the bottom when it gets, your glass is actually a bit bigger than that. So you'll get broken glass in the bottom of the door and when the, when the door's been fixed, the new glass is on, of course, you don't know there's a little bit of glass in the bottom of the door and that then over time you get mud and dirt and bits that get down there then starts to block up and then these drains block up and sometimes the door will just simply fill up the water so if you have a heavy bout of rain it's not getting out of the channels it should do so the door's filling up and consequently it, will, it can put force its way out the door membrane but other times it could be that Potentially somebody's taken the door panel off to put upgrade speakers, people do that. It could just be the door, the door membrane's been badly weathered over time. And a lot of the time we find them like that, it's, you know, it, it, it just had water running over it for a while and it's been stuck on from the manufacturers and it, it started to come away. And therefore your rain is running down the door, down the glass past the membrane and then a little bit dripping and you don't often see it you think you're going to see it because well, I haven't seen it well it may run onto that carpet but of course this area here is overlapping where it goes so your speaker's there and the water's running in but just below you there so you you know people think oh I can't see it dripping well I you know I don't know but it's actually could actually effectively be just running there below your vision when you're sitting up and you're driving or even when you're just parked and then it's filling up the carpet so we do get a lot of those and people have been up under the dashboard trying to find where the problem is and the problem's right there. Right, so um, now we've got to deal with the water problem. Uh, this particular customer had some mould in the car, but he's taken our advice before he drove the car to us. He's cleaned the mould with an antimicrobial product. So, um, that's the bit he can see, um, it doesn't mean that he's got all of the mould. So what we've also done, and this is included in the 28 point check, is we've fobbed the car with a machine 
and that sprays the antimicrobial pretty much everywhere in the car. Uh, I'll also recover the safety points, the, electri uh, the uh, electronics and those car parts, but we've been all under the seats and into this water. So I, I'm comfortable now with putting my hands in this water. I'm not suggesting that it's going to be, it's, it's going to give anyone an electric shock. So you guys that are thinking, is it wet in my own, their own car? But you need to be aware that mold can cause you a problem if you're breathing it in. So I know there's no moldy bits gonna, I'm going to breathe in that's under this seat and we'll be taking the seat out to show you a little bit further down the line. But if I'm putting my hand in this water now, you can see I've got about five mil of water there, half an inch to us, us guys that are getting on a bit. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so we've got uh, a little bit of water on the surface, but once you, you, know, you realize that, that I, I know, but I can tell you that there's a lot more water in this car to come. So we'll show you a little bit more about that. So to show how much water there's in here is I've got to get the carpet up and to get the carpet up I've got to get the seat out. So we've got the carpet there, on this particular car, the foam is underneath the carpet. So you've got the carpet wet there, you can see the water there. There's the foam, and that's the foam, and there's all the water. And that can show you, typically, the amount of water. Now, this isn't going to take long for, to remove this piece of water here, you know. Suction machine, two minutes, you know, it sucks all that water up. There's, but the, to emphasise the point here, we've got loose here, we've got the equivalent of a bucket of water, so maybe two gallons. Um, but in the foam, there's another maybe one or two gallons. And this particular car, the foam is only a couple of inches thick here. But we've got here another bit of foam again. Some cars are thicker than this, but you've got another bit of foam that goes up the bulkhead. So um, it will be wet up there a bit further, but we'll get that up. And then, of course, for those of you who found water just at the back, you may not even realise that this car's wet at the back, of course, but um, that the water is at both, side, both front and back. Um, some cars, you don't realise what's happened is, of course, if the lowest point of the car is, uh, so the car's parked up hill slightly, then the water's going to find its way to the back, and it might have been coming in at the front. And here's where it's all running underneath. So you think, oh, it's wet in the back, so the water's coming from the back. And of course, for those of you who are looking for water leaks and watching this, then you'll see that actually, sometimes it can be very different once you find the story. Now, look under here, and then we've got another load of foam and another huge amount of water. And this particular water doesn't particularly smell, but yet we do get in a lot of cars where this water's been underneath for a while. And believe me, it doesn't smell very nice. So that's why you're getting the damp smell in the car, of course, and the steamed up windows. Um, looking on this car, this particular customer's lucky, I think, because we can see there, there's an electronic box that's just been touching the water. Maybe there's, we're gonna have a look at that, and make sure there hasn't gone, uh, water hasn't gone in any. I'm not worried about the wires, because they're wires and they could, you know, we have the wires under the sea. <laughs> Um, so there's no holes in the wires, so that, but I'm more concerned about this little unit here because this could be um, something to be censoring from airbag or safety units. So I might add at this point the battery's been disconnected at the, in the car, so we've got no worries about anything like that. So we're going to get a suction machine and I'll show you what we're going to do on the next process. Right, so this is one of our fogging machines. Um, basically, it's like a vacuum backwards. It's quite weird, really, but they put liquid in it as well. It doesn't just, it just spray air. Um, but what we've got in here is an antimicrobial product that kills the mould, basically, and all the off water and anything that might be uncomfortable in the car, shall we say. Um, so 
we've already done the car because we've done the 28 point check and so we've already done the car but of course by spraying all the surfaces we're not going to be under the carpet so we're going to be doubly sure that we've got everything and I'll just show you how this actually works so I turn it on a little bit noisy but then it's spraying into that water and into that sponge and I'll get it right under there as well as right under here and in between those layers um, and I'll get it under there and it mixes with that water of course and then when we pull the water out um, it's going to be doubly safe Making, making sure not to get it on that little bolt. So you can see there, basically what it does and how it works. Right, so uh, I'm just going to illustrate something here. So for those of you who think you're going to get your wet vac out from home and um, give it a, a vacuum, yes, I know you can pull some of the water out, but I'm going to show you here. I'm going to turn this machine on. This is a twin engine. A commercial vacuum cleaner, but it's designed to pull up water, uh, so it's like a wet vac, you know. I've got a different attachment on here, so I'm going to pull the water out from the surface here, and you will see that I've got quite a bit of suction. I can just show you that, but I've got there's quite a bit of suction on there, and that's pulling the water out and through there. And you can see that I'm giving it now. Ordinarily, if we were going to shampoo this car, we would be cleaning the surface of this carpet. And uh, you know, a good wet back shampoo would clean all the carpet, but it's not effectively, it's only cleaning the surface. So, the same at home, if you had a carpet cleaning company come round, they're not going to flood your carpet, they're going to clean maybe the first two millimeters of the surface. So, that's the same thing here. I'm sucking out the water there and I'm giving it a good suck. And that machine I can leave on there for a couple of minutes and I will pull out probably two litres of water. But just to illustrate uh, what I was saying is, I'll just pull the nice little bit of a pattern here. Right, so I'm going to lift this up now and show you. So obviously that has made that a bit drier, and obviously maybe a week or two's time that surface will be dry. If I show you under here, of course it hasn't touched this stuff. Now if I get the suction machine on this side, I can pull this out, and you can see that doesn't take very long to pull out a lot of that water, although it will be still flowing to this surface as I do it. But then if I put the suction on this side, you can see clearly there it's pulling out a lot more water because the water's found its way more in the bottom of the foam. But of course it's going to take me a while to pull this water out and then of course you'll see the next stage will be, see that water's reappeared there now and you can see there I will suck it out. Have a go around on this side, of course. The same goes for here. You can see there that there's the, the foam, and I just put it on there. I can pull the water all I like from this side, and I can feel it going through this pipe now, going good, 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 good. It's pulling out quite a few litres of water as I'm feeling this now. It's pulling it through the foam, but of course, if I lift the foam up, you can see that it's only a drop in the ocean, so we suck it. Right, so I'm happy I've pulled out as much water out of this part of the carpet as I can. Uh, the foam is still wet. Uh, I've been sucking this for well, on and off for uh, over an hour. Um, and I've pulled out as much water as I'm happy with. The carpet's still wet, of course. 
but the next stage will be the blower and then I can show you that the foam, that luckily enough on this car I've been able to remove most of the foam. This bit under here goes right up underneath the bulkhead so we'll get our drying pipes right up under there and blow hot air right in there to make sure that is completely dry. Um, but you know that will be the next step I'll show you that. Here's the water that's come out of this car. This is just on this half. And so that will give you an idea. That's what I've pulled out so far. That's with the, the suction vacuum tube. So we've got another car on the go at the moment and uh, this carpet's just been lifted so I might as well show you that that's not a one-off. Um, this is a completely different car. It's a BMW and you can see the foam here and this is all the water. This carpet's just been lifted. The foam again on this one is quite thick and of course there's your water. This particular car um, had a screen leaking so uh, the water's been coming in on both sides so it's, uh, it's going to be wet both sides I'm afraid and you know this is going to take a lot of drying. As you can see there, you don't know, you see, you just don't know this water's there and you, you know, you're driving your car and it's not until you've had a lot of rain that it's filled up and this is exactly what's happened here. So these people have just found a little bit of water on the surface and noticed the car steaming up and don't realise they're carrying in this instance, I reckon there's five gallons of water in here, you know. So we've pulled a seat out of the car here and this is the extent of water. This has all been treated but you've got a little bit of mould on the surface here but I'm not too worried about that. We will clean that and we'll clean it with antimicrobial product. Um, but if I turn it over this just shows the emphasis of kind of how much water is in this particular car. So you, you know, people don't even realise, you know, um, how much water can be in the car. This is just, you know, thick foam under that seat and that's of course why the mould is grown on the other side. Right, okay, so we've pulled the vast majority of the water out of the car, out under the carpets. There's still some wet foam under here, but we'll address that after we've addressed this door panel. So, inside the door panel, you remember, if you remember earlier, we talked about what was behind the door panel. If I, I've unclipped this already and the screws are undone so we can show you, otherwise it'll take me a little while unclipping it. So we gently lift that off, we've got a light there, so there'll be a plug on the back of here. And that plug will just need releasing um, in there, which I can do. That little lever there. And then I can release that piece of the light. I'll put this somewhere safe. I'm going to put it in the car for a minute and just leave it so it's tilted down safe. Because I want to show you behind the panel. So this is what we're talking about, what a membrane looks like. And uh, this one's like a, a foamy stuff, but it's insulated, so it will help with the sound and insulation. But you can see there around the edges that it's started to come away. Now at this bit, this is unlikely water's going to come in, because it's not going to go down the window and jump back up. But if you look further around, this is still stuck. It's a little bit weak here. You can see there, I've only got to pull it away a little bit lightly. And you see the original glue has come away from it and if I go back down to the corner which is more where the water would find its way I can see there that it's come away at that corner. So I haven't got anything obvious signs of water there but what I have found is there's water just here. Um, if you look carefully there and then I can see here if I gently lift that out there's a little split in it. And there's where our problem lies. So of course the water would find its way inside the door, and that's a ledge of course. Water would drip on the glass, when the glass is down inside the door, it's not going to make that jump. Of course when your window's up and you're parked and it's raining, the water runs down the glass, across there, onto this little ledge, through there, and you can see the path of the water down there. And if I look very, very carefully, you can see that it's come down to there. So it seems to add a dead end there. But if I look on this trim, you can see a little bit of water on here. Can you see that? So that's what's happened. That's where that is. And of course, then it will find its well way along the trim to where the speaker was, what we saw earlier. And it drips out of the bottom of there. So that's often, you know, often the case. Your water might come in and zigzag around. I mean, uh, 
you know, it doesn't run straight down when it's got all this little stuff to do. So, you know, these, these little paths to follow. And we often see water dripping out the bottom of what seems to be the speaker. Now, if I can feel there, or I can feel the water on the bottom there, obviously you can't see in the camera. Look, or maybe you can, but can you see the water there in the camera? Yeah? So, that we know the water's there. And the water shouldn't be there because this, em this membrane is here to stop the water and, and also steam and all of that. So the membrane's got to come off, and I think it's a pretty good membrane. Apart from that, it will need to be resealed, and this little bit here will need a dressing. So hopefully we can save this membrane. It does feel relatively strong. Um, I just think the glue is taking it away, and this is the proper side one. Um, this difficult sometimes with these kind of things because um, sometimes these aren't parts parts aren't always readily available and sometimes they're very expensive. I've seen a lot of these for 50 odd quid each, you know, and you think, well, it's just a piece, but, you know, the manufacturer's got to keep it on a shelf for somebody who might want it in 10 years' time. So I'll try and save it, but if I can't, we've, we've got some of this and we can make them. And all you then do is use this as a template. So um, I've got a plastic lever. These are the levering tools for other jobs around the car, but the good thing about this is, is plastic, so I can gently lever it away and not do any damage to the metal work. So I'll just go around the edge of it. Look out of the way that's all coming away there. So I'll just break that bit off there and then gently help it off. And then work our way around it. It might have been a bit moisture the other side, of course, potentially, and I'll show you now. Look, there it is. It's just come away. And look, there's some water. It just shows you. <laughs> Um, there's been a little bit of water there for us to see, but then of course um, where the water's gone on you can see now that it's coming away much easier because it's been under that bit of pressure. But so far I've managed to save this, this is perfect. So I won't bore you with doing the whole lot, um, but you know, we've got to do four of these, so why not? Right, so we get round to this bit, something a bit more interesting here, because this the water here was clear, this is where we did our test. So the water that we used was just rain from a tap, you know. So that was where we saw it obviously coming out from there. But as you get further around here, you can see we've got the debris on it. Can you see all that debris? It's like, uh, and that's called clearly our rainwater. So if I gently pull it across there, you can see the dirt on it. So clearly, the rainwater's been going to this point. Right, um, as you can see, we've pulled this tube in, and um, so the blowing machine isn't in the car, um, so we can leave it, I'm happy to leave it blowing overnight. It's, it's warm air, very warm air, but it, it's not unbearable. You can put your hand on it and it won't burn it, so we don't get any problems with any, you know, too much heat. Um, but at the same time, it's a lot of a lot of air. This is an eight-inch pipe, and on the end of it is a three-phase blower. So it really is pushing like the equivalent of um, three of those powerful fan heaters that obviously burn a lot of electricity at home. But this is three times powerful than that. Um, but you know, you need that to get the foam dry. Otherwise, it would just take a lot of days. If you're drying something at home now, those of you guys that are watching that are doing the DIY. Um, yeah, you can get a fan heater and, and plug it in and then probably I would say I wouldn't leave the fan heater running overnight. You just don't know if it might wobble and be, and they do put out a bit more heat than this. Although this is going to dry it faster because it's high velocity air. So I'm going to turn it on now and then I'm going to direct it and I'll show you what's next. So it will take a couple of minutes to get warm, but you don't notice it's not warm anyway at the moment, but uh, it's already starting to warm up. But yeah, that's really pushing out a lot of air right in the key area. Now this foam under here is still wet. I'm gonna put a piece of plastic just to leave it here to hold that away from the base of the, where it would otherwise be sitting flat on the footwell. So um, that will then allow the air to blow under there. And I'm gonna put that under there for gas mark six <laughs> uh, for a couple of hours and then I'll come back and feel what it's done. Um, bear in mind on this particular car we were able to get the foam bit out. A lot of cars you may put this under here for the, uh, you know, half the night or we don't get up in the middle of the night but 
you know, I would say that we'll lift this side up and the air finds its way both sides, but the vast problem, the majority of the problem, of course, will be right up under this bulkhead, which we showed earlier. So the hot air blowing through the car will dry out everything in the car, including the headlining and everywhere else. But the bit I'm focusing on is the problem area, which is sodden wet underneath, right at the bottom, and where the water keeps finding its way. So, um, but at the same time, I'm going to lift the back bit of the carpet up as well, and that will circulate the air. And hopefully by the end of the night, uh, by, ne by the next morning, this will all be dry, and 90% of the rest of the car will be dry. Obviously in this particular car, we're only drying this side, but the other side will have received dampness. The general car will be damp, and of course by the morning it won't be. It will be proper, uh, properly dry. So, have a good feel round under there now, and it is absolutely bone dry. So, in this case, we've been lucky today. Sometimes we can fill these in the morning, they've still got a little bit more drying to do, so we turn the blower on a bit longer. But in this case, because we've been able to move the foam bit, and the foam bit we've dried as well, it's allowed it to dry a bit easier. But you can feel all this is absolutely bone dry, there's no water in any of the light, in the wires or anywhere. So it's really, really dry. This is the little unit. I'll put this in here because um, I might spray a bit of um, uh, cleaner for this. We have a, a contact cleaner. This isn't safety related. It might make the alarm work. So we're gonna have a little go with that anyway. We'll put all that back, plug it in. We'll get the seats back in the car. And uh, I think this can go back to the customer today. So now the car is completely dry. We've got it under our rain arts test, which is not exactly the same as real rain but it's as close as we can do it. It's getting the test, we know that if it gets wet inside, we know there's obviously a problem. So the customer's gonna take it away for the real world test, and we'll see how that works over the coming months. Right, so if you liked our video showing you the ins and outs of what we do with the water leak finding here, then please don't hesitate to press the like button down below and uh, if you want to subscribe we're going to have some more videos on varying different topics uh, that we do we do ceramic coatings and we do lease return um, and i'm sure we'll keep you interested <laughs>